Let's take a look at what is inside Google Meet once you start a meeting. So I'm gonna go to an invite and select join with Google Meet to open my meeting. Once you do that, you'll see a little preview of your video and some other features. For example, you can start the meeting with your microphone on or off, video on or off. You can select on the bottom right hand corner the visual effects for your meeting. And then on the right hand side, you'll see join now, and then you'll also see present. So if you wanted to start the meeting immediately with uh, sharing your screen, you could do that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select join now. And now we'll take a tour of what's inside Google Meet and all the features. Once you're in Google Meet, on the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see your display name, the time, and then your meeting code. You can give that to people to join. Maybe they want to go to meet.google.com and enter the code. That's where they can type that in. You can also, on the top, copy the URL and send in an email or wherever you would like to share that so people could join your meeting. On the bottom middle, you'll see all your buttons, for example, microphone, your camera, and the picture, if you turn your video off, is the picture that's linked to your Google account. That's the one that's gonna appear right there. Then next to that is closed caption. You can turn that button on if you want your closed caption to turn on. You can also, if you look to the right, select the language that you want your closed caption to be set to. Pull that down and select any language you would want that to be to. And then if you want to turn it off, you just click it again. Next to that, you'll see the reactions. So here is where you can have your uh, meeting attendees select reactions. And I'll show you how you could turn that feature on and off and some other features. Next to that, you'll see present now. This is where you're going to click to share your screen. So if you click that, you will see Chrome tab window and entire screen. You can select whichever window that you would want to share. And just note at the bottom, you wanna make sure if you have any videos that you wanna play during your meeting, you wanna have this button turned on. This is to share your audio with your members of the meeting. Next to sharing the screen is the raise hand. People could click that if they have a question, you will see that their hand is raised and then once they're done, they can unclick that to put their hand down. And next to the hand is the three dots for more options. On the top, you'll see that you can click to open a workspace that you can, a whiteboard workspace where you can have your attendees work together and collaborate on. You also see the layout here. If you click change layout, you can select how you want your screen to look automatic, tiled, spotlight, or sidebar. Then you will see full screen. You'll also see you can open picture in picture. And you can also get to your visual effects here. Again, here you could turn on captions if you wanted to. And then you can also get to your settings here. Next to the three dots and the settings is the hang up call button. If you click that, you can leave the call or you can end the call for everyone. You have two options when you click that, whichever one you may need. To get to the visual effects of your Google Meet, you can hover your mouse over your video and you'll see the little stars for applying visual effects. You can also go to the three dots and you'll get to apply visual effects from there. Once you click that on the right hand side, you will see all the options you have. You can set no background at all and just have your workspace. You can apply different blur levels and then you have all sorts of different background types that you can choose from. Towards the bottom, there's even some different styles that you can choose and some different filters. Different options for you to select. Once you find one that you would like, you just click it and then X out of the visual effects. Visual effects you set will be remembered the next time you start a meeting. The same visual effects will start and then you could always change them again if you would like. Take a look at some of the settings options for your Google Meet. And to get to that, you're gonna click on the three dots, select settings, 
And this is gonna be where you're gonna find audio and video, which is really important if you ever have to troubleshoot your calls. You'll find the microphone options, and you'll also find your video options. In videos, you'll even see an option where you can adjust video lighting that you can turn on or off. For general, you'll see that this removes you from a call after a few minutes if no one else joins. You could turn this feature on or off. You'll also find captions again where you can select the language for your meeting captions. You could turn that feature on or off from here. And you'll see reactions. So if you want to have reactions option in your Google Meet, this is where you could turn that on or off. You can have your reactions have an animation or not. And then you could even add a sound for your reactions if you wanted to. So those are all the settings that you're gonna find in your settings gear for your Google Meet. We're gonna look at the different layout options for your Google Meet calls. So right now, I have two people in this meeting. You'll see my video is showing up on the bottom right as a little thumbnail, and then the other person's in the center. If I click on the three dots and select Change Layout, you'll see the options that we have here. Auto, Tiled, Spotlight, and Sidebar. If I click on Tiled, for example, I can select down here this bar, depending on how many people are in my call, how many tiles I want on one screen. So if I click X for tiled, you'll see that nothing has changed because it looks like the same as before. If I want my picture to be included in the tile, I'm gonna click on my little thumbnail, select the three dots, and select show in tile. Now I'm gonna be showing in the tile with the rest of the people in my call. And if I wanna remove myself from the tile, I just go to the three dots again and select remove this from tile. We'll take a look at the buttons that are on the bottom right hand corner of your Google Meet video. So if you click on the I, this is going to pull up all your meeting details, your joining information. You can copy the meeting link and send that. You can also copy joining info and send that if you would need to. Next to that is the people in your meeting. So right now there's only two people in my meeting. If I go here, I can add people by clicking the add people button and typing their email address. And I could also do some other things in here to control um, some features. So if I needed to click on the three dots next to my attendee, I can add them as a co-host, I could remove them from the meeting, and I can also, in here, mute everybody. One thing you can't do in Google Meet is unmute people. So if you needed somebody to unmute their microphone, one option would be to go into the chat and type that they need to unmute their microphone. Next to the people is the chat. So here is where you can have the chat feature on or off by clicking this button, let everyone send messages or not. Next to that is the activities button. So activities lets you install like some third party add-ons. For example, maybe you wanted to add a Figma whiteboard or an other activity, you can do that here. Towards the bottom, you can select whiteboarding and this allows you to create a new Jamboard that your attendees can use for the meeting. And it's, it creates like a Jamboard file with a link. You can also choose for a Jamboard from your Google Drive. Now note, Google Jamboard is being phased out, so this is gonna be a temporary option for to use, but you can use it for a little while. We're gonna look at even more activities offered in Google Meet, found on the bottom right hand corner in that activities button, that little puzzle icon. So click on that and you'll see in here, there's also breakout rooms, polls, Q&A, you can record meetings, you can have transcripts, and then over here you can find the whiteboarding as well. So let's take a look at breakout rooms. When you open up breakout rooms, you can set them up by clicking on this pencil, set up as many rooms as you would like, 
You could even set up a timer that will end the breakout rooms automatically if you'd like, or you could just close the breakout rooms manually as well. If you want, you could rename the breakout rooms or just leave them general, like breakout one, breakout two. And then once you're done setting everything up, you just select the open rooms button and that will open your breakout rooms. Next is polls. So with polls, if you wanted to start a poll in your meeting, you could just select start a poll, type your question and your options, and then you would select launch to start it. You also have an option for Q&A. In Q&A, you can offer your attendees to ask questions during your meeting, and then you could answer them. You can also ask a question that you want your attendees to answer. You also have an option to record your meetings. If you would need to, you just select recording. You can even select if you want captions or not, and then start recording. Find transcripts and activities, and also again, whiteboarding. Next to the activities button is the host controls. Now the host controls you may have already configured when you created your Google Meet invite from your Google Calendar, but it's good to know that you can access this anytime because you might have to make some changes. So in the host controls, this is where you can let everyone share their screens or send chats or send reactions. You could turn these on or off as needed. The turn on microphone, do you want your users or students or attendees to be able to turn on their microphone? If you don't, then you would turn this off. Again, for the, it's the same for video. Do you want your attendees to be able to turn on their video or, or not? So you can turn on this feature on or off right there. Your meeting access, this is again important for privacy and security. Um, the host must join before anyone else. I suggest always have this button turned on unless it's a special situation where attendees can join the meeting without you being there. And then again, um, access type. Do you want it to be trusted, open, or restricted? I highly recommend either having trusted or restricted for your meetings. And that's how you would get to the host controls by going to the bottom right hand corner button for host controls.